welcome to this magical tour of the whitefish blastula. So before we actually look at individual cells, I wanted to explain to you what a blastula is. So it's considered a ball or group of cells that's formed in humans about seven to 10 days after fertilization of the ovum by the sperm. And in humans, it's about 100 cells or so. So this is from a white fish, a particular fish. And you'll notice you can see different cells. You can see nuclei here, but you can't really see what's going on with them at this magnification. So we're going to magnify this further and then look at individual stages. Now we're looking at interphase at 400 times magnification. Sometimes you'll read that interphase is a resting phase, and that's not necessarily true depending on the type of cell it is. If it's a cell that will actively undergo cell division, it really isn't resting. It's a preparatory phase. So during this phase, the cells will replicate their DNA. They also have to go through a G1 and a G2 phase. And in really simple terms, what's happening during those phases is that your cell is prepping for mitosis that'll occur after interphase. Most cells spend the majority of their lifetime, about 95% of their lifetime in interphase. So they're making amino acids, they're making glucose, uh, potentially they're absorbing fatty acids, they're making new organelles, they're making new cell membranes so that as they grow and make double of themselves, double themselves, that you'll end up with a pretty good amount of starting materials, be those organic compounds or the organelles to sustain a new cell's lifetime. So while I was talking here, did you figure out what the interphase cells are? There's several in this slide. And I'm drawing red arrows so you can see which ones they are. I just picked a few. So how do I know their interphase? Well, I can clearly see the nuclear membrane is still intact. And... I can see some nucleoli. Those are these dark dots in the nucleus. And you'll see that many of these cells have two or three very visible nucleoli. And the chromosomes aren't really clear because they're still in that chromatin phase. We can see clear chromosomes over here. It looks like that cell might be in metaphase, but we don't in the ones I've indicated as being in interphase. So now we've moved out of interphase and we're going to look for prophase cells. So prophase is that first phase of mitosis and some textbooks will break it into prophase and prometaphase or prophase and late prophase. And you can see on the right, I've given you some information about what's happening here. So one of the things that happening is the nuclear membrane is starting to dissolve or break down. And the reason for that is so that the duplicated chromosomes can then easily migrate to those new poles to either side of what's going to be two new cells. Spindle fibers start to form from the centrioles and those spindle fibers kind of act like fishing line. They will connect to a kinetochore on the chromosomes. And then when that kinetochore divides, it'll pull the chromosomes, the spindle fibers will help pull the chromosomes to either side of those developing two new cells. So for reference, I've put in this really simple picture here of two red chromosomes and they're connected in the center by this red dot, which is a centromere. The green dots are the kinetochores or kinetochores. Those are where the spindle fibers are going to attach. So that's all that's happening in prophase for the moment. Did you find the prophase cell? It's this one right here. And part of the reason I know is because right around it here, 
and here are two interphase cells to which I can compare it. So in that prophase cell at the end of the red arrow, I don't see a clear nuclear membrane. I don't see clear nucleoli. And it looks like the chromosomes are starting to condense. So now we're looking at metaphase, which is the second phase of mitotic division. So in this phase, the major thing that happens here is that the chromosomes, which are connected, the sister chromatids are connected by their centromeres, they line up at the equator of the cell, right? So that doesn't seem like much, but think about why that's important. If the chromosomes were simply scattered as pairs all through the cell, how do you know that you'd end up with exactly the same chromosomes in each new cell? It'd be kind of like a traffic jam. Like Hopefully they end up in the right places, maybe not, who knows? And that isn't good. Chaos isn't good for a body. It's not good for a living thing that wants to make sure that it is creating the same cells for the same purposes, depending on where you are and what you're doing. So did you figure out what the metaphase cells were? There's two, one here and one here. So you can see spindle fibers here. That's one of the big keys. And you can see the chromosomes lined up at the equator. So two big clues to help you determine what is a metaphase. So now on to anaphase, the third phase of mitosis. Remember mitosis is strictly the division of the nuclear material and the chromosomes. It's not synonymous with the term cell division. So what's happening in anaphase? Right, so if you look at the cells here, you can see that the chromosomes are being pulled from the center, from that equator along which they were lined up in metaphase, and those centromeres between the sister chromosomes, between those pairs, had to split, and now the chromosomes move to either side, so they're going to be part of their whole new cell. Again, why is this important? Because if these chromosomes don't split and migrate to opposite sides of the cells, then you can end up with, say, too few cells in one of the new cells or too many in the other cell. One example of this are trisomies. So trisomy 21 means that a person has three copies of chromosome 21, and that's not good. Too much DNA is, I think, is bad as too little DNA. So now we're in the home stretch of mitosis, which is telophase. And about midway through telophase, we'll also start cytokinesis. So for telophase, what's happening here is we're redoing most of the processes or structures that were undone in prophase. So as you can see, the chromosomes will be at the opposite ends, the two poles of what's going to become two new cells, and then the nuclear membrane will start to reform, the nucleoli will start to reform, those spindle fibers, they're going to dissolve, they're protein fibers, so they're going to dissolve into their amino acid components, and then we can use them for something else in this cell, because cells are highly efficient. So as this is happening, cytokinesis is also going to start to play its role, and cytokinesis is where in animal cells, because that's what we are, eukaryotic animals, you're going to see a cleavage furrow start to form, which is sort of like pinching off the two cells so that they each have their own separate independent um, cell membranes. So did you find the telophase cell in here, cells? It's these two right here. And how do we know that? Because we can see the cleavage furrow here and we can also see the remainders 
of the spindle fibers.